I am guessing that Elon Musk might be a genius, but I think, in my humble opinion, he is making a bit of a horse's arse off Twitter, or X as it is called now. I actually prefer to call it Twitter because I think that the letter X or the word X is harsh. It's a kind of ugly letter, in my opinion, to say. Anyway, X it is because it's his company um, and he can call it whatever he wants. But I think he is making a bit of a mess of it. Recently, my hobby has been tuning into my X account and shaking my head in absolute disbelief at the mess of it all. Not just how it operates now, but more so at the moment, the amount of negative comments on China that I see and how stupid and ignorant a lot of the comments are actually saying and stating and what they're saying about China and I read them and just shake my head and think this is just not true and some of it is just stupid and to be honest a lot of people because they are ignorant and don't le look into the detail they will just see it as just a truth and that's my concern. This is Beijing by the way. So I was reading on a thread on X last week where there was a person talking about China and how China could invade America. And I'm reading this and almost screaming out loud, for crying's sake man, if you actually looked at a map, do you realise where China is and, and where America is? And, on the map, there are 6,000 miles of sea between the both of them and have you actually seen strategically how strong the geography of where America is situated and also how impossible it would be to invade America. And another thing, China has repeatedly stated that they are much more interested in peace and they are not interested in any hot or cold war. Their history over the last 40 years actually backs that up. And bear in mind the added fact that America has China surrounded by something like 90 military bases and also America has by far the strongest military machine the world has ever seen. And these are just facts, but they're often ignored and people will swallow the fear mongering without any question, just because somebody states it as, as a truth. The actual worst comments are usually from politicians who do some, write some stupid and speak some stupid stuff. It's always interesting to listen to or read what they say and then look into their political campaign funding and see why they say what they say. All this is very easy to research on Google and look at who is funding their political careers or the political campaigns. There's a couple I would point out. Take Nikki Haley for instance. She's she's a strong candidate for the Republican Party presidential nomination and has the possibility to run for president next year or in the future. She's big mad about China and is always pointing to the boogie man which is China. You see this is what they do. Politicians always have to point to and talk about a boogie man in order to terrify you and scare you away from some of the, the research that you want to look into to get the truth. In the UK, it's the people that cross the channel on boats that are the, the, the boogeyman. Despite the amount of damage the Tory party in the UK has actually done on all fronts from Brexit to the financial mistakes they've made and so on, they just want you to believe that the reason why the country is a mess is because there's people on boats coming across the channel and it's their problem. Anyway, back to Nikki Haley. Her campaign is uh, supported by a lot of neo-conservatives like the Koch brothers, K-O-C-H, I think you spell it. These people are very much into and favour the idea of growing the US empire and uh, striving for war. War is very profitable, you see. To understand that, all you have to do is look into the history of banking from uh, the Medici, Medici family in Italy to the Lois family in Britain to the Rothschilds dynasty in Europe or the JP Morgan banking dynasty in the US you will see that the big banking dynasties made most of their money 
from funding the wars. An interesting fact for you to understand that is, did you know that the UK has just finished paying off its World War II debt back in uh, 26th of December 2006? So that's all there. All you have to do is just look that up. And uh, yeah, war costs money. This information is all there. It can be found on the internet, including the campaign backing information I've just quoted for Nikki Haley. You just need the curiosity and the time to dig into some of the detail, and I recommend you do that. So another interesting person to look at is a guy called Marco Rubio, uh, and dig into his political funding. He is very much again anti-China and he's always talking about the idea of banning TikTok even though the TikTok in the West is a separate entity from the TikTok mm -hmm. in China and when I've looked into his campaign finances I did expect to see some backing from American social media companies you know they're paying him to talk down TikTok so they can benefit but I couldn't see that detail to be fair um, there are some donations from PACs which are political action committees and they are shrouded in a little bit of a mystery because they don't actually have to state their funding and where it's coming from and they're not that very open about it so you never know the other thing that I read is that Marco Rubio took over four million dollars over four years in campaign finance from the NRA which is essentially the gun lobby and he's a good Christian apparently he's also had a, a fair amount of money given to him for his campaign finances from the Middle Eastern entities which could be why he speaks out about TikTok but I'm not sure that's why I say you can't spend 200 million dollars on a campaign and not be owing people something and the next thing you know, they have to deal with the special interests. The next thing you know, they're doing special favors for special people and not dealing with what you need. Education, health care, environmental issues. They have to deal with oil companies, chemical companies, drug companies. And they owe them. And in the process, people get neglected. The poor have no advocate because the poor can't afford a lobbyist. The Statue of Liberty says, give me your tired, your poor, not your wealthy, your gifted, and your endowed. And now, a note here, and it's interesting given that I live in China, but because of the lack of open speech allowed about the Middle Eastern conflicts, then I won't comment on that because I just don't want to get attacked from all sides. No matter what you say, you'll get attacked. So I'm not going to comment on any conflict in the Middle East. But what I would say is, I've always been in favour of peace on this channel and I echo the USA and China's stance on the solution for the current conflict being related to the two-state system. Speaking about free speech and protest, I also saw this story on X, sharing with you now. So this story refers to this time last year, where in Beijing, we were in a COVID lockdown in parts of Beijing, and there was some protest, the actual protests were in this, this area, actually here in Liangma River, which is where I am now. So that story points to this protest of last year and it's called the blank paper protest and it talks about what's next for the protesters. It's actually a nothing story and it's designed just to cause problems as you can see a lot of stories that land on X or some of the social media are just designed just to cause problems and, and, and again illustrate this bogeyman thing. Just for the record you can protest in China uh, there are always protests happening in China. You just have to be uh, peaceful in your protest. Again, in the West, 
in the Western countries, more and more laws are being passed to stop any form of peaceful protest. Just look it up. Um, start with the UK, for instance. They've just recently passed more laws to stifle peaceful protest. So there is that. So I've put the phone down to talk and rub my hands because it is super cold here. I think it's minus two or something and, and it's a very cold, icy wind. But when you think about the younger generation and particularly the younger generation in the US of A, the good old US of A, you can understand why they're getting pissed off if you think about the life that they've had so far. If you are, let's say, 25 years and under and you're living in the USA, you have known nothing but war your whole life, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Syria, Ukraine, etc, etc. You also probably have a big student debt and you're struggling to get a decent job to pay off that debt or a decent job that pays more than minimum wage. You're likely to be living paycheck to paycheck and you possibly have got a credit card with debt on it because that is the American way. You cannot afford a house because you are priced out of the market. You might still be on your parents' medical insurance, but not for long, because if you're close to 25, I think you have to come off your parents' medical insurance at the age of 25. You're probably working very, very hard to be responsible, avoid the drug culture and stay away from violence. But right through your whole school days, you had to take part in active shooter drills because of the fear of being shot while going to school. You've got a ton of social pressure coming from the unchecked social media. And to top it all off, you probably don't feel that the aging and distant politicians are hearing your cries for change. And with that in mind, you can see why they are getting absolutely pissed off. And I think they should actually get pissed off. I have to tell you, I'm encouraged by the younger generation it is only a matter of time before they make their voice heard next year 2024 the elections in the us uk and so on some other western countries they're going to be very very interesting and i fear next year will be challenging on many fronts financially socially politically and from a geopolitical standpoint but i think the younger generation will carry us through and help us older generation see some sense maybe i'm the eternal optimist but you can only hope let me know what you think in the comments below this is me ian here freezing cold in beijing saying look after yourself your family your community and please join me in standing our ground and fighting for peace in the words of john lennon all we are saying is give peace a chance this is me ian here in beijing take care peace out I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change